All systems online and operational. Awaiting command. All clear. Forward two meters. Forward two meters. Go. Wait a minute. What was that? Unidentified object. 20 degrees. Tracking. Send command. Pan right. Panning right. Clear. See, something else moved it, Chris. This isn't... I didn't make it do that. This doesn't make any sense. Did you check the batteries? No, uh, batteries. It's, it's, infra yeah. it's infrared. It doesn't yeah. need batteries. Since you ran out of water... Pan left. What so Penning left. I forgot the batteries. It's infrared. It doesn't need batteries. Houston, we have confirmation. There is no intelligent life Anything on Mars. Been out there for over similar food. Can anyone hear me? Anyone in JPL? Johnson? On the table, we have the ultra tough video recon bot from Covert Ops and Jack's Pacific. This little radio control gadget has shock resistant wheels, a camera, and a live feed video screen on the controller. On the back of the box here, we have upside down graphic. So there is a quick image of the toy again. It is wireless, it has a video lens, it has ultra tough wheels, it has a controller with video screen. Plus expand your arsenal with some of the other toys available from Covert Ops. The future of space telerobotic communication and operations begins with the K-10 technology demonstration mission. Power astronauts in space trained to control the K-10 robot on the ground at NASA Ames. What are the future uses of telerobotics in space exploration? Grab your remote and find out next on NASA Edge. He sort of kind of gives the top level approach of the whole uh, surface telerobotics test conducted at Ames. So Terry, tell us about the surface telerobotics test that we're going to be watching today. Yeah, today we're having uh, Karen Nyberg on the International Space Station remotely operate the K-10 robot here in the Roverscape at NASA Ames. I understand you've been testing all summer. Have you been doing the same test throughout the summer or different setups? Well, the overall goal for surface telerobotics is to look at how astronauts in space on a spacecraft like the space station can operate robots on the surface of other planets. And we've been actually simulating a possible future lunar mission where you would have an astronaut in orbit above the moon control a robot to do work on the lunar far side. We've actually conducted two test sessions before today, and today Karen Nyberg is going to help us sort of round out the overall testing. And what are sort of the objectives that we're looking at today? Today we're trying to look at really the deployment of a simulated radio telescope. So Karen's going to be in charge of laying out a telescope with the K-10 rover, and then after that she's going to use the rover to inspect it and document the actual deployed location of the telescope. I think for us, really, the, the whole technology of telerobotics or remotely operating a robot is something that's very important for NASA in the future. On the space station today, we operate robot arms just on the other side of the bulkhead. It's not that far away. And for the future, we'd like to be able to extend the astronaut's reach all the way down from orbit to the surface. It's recording in real time. Uh, so what we'll try to do here, just to kind of show you how it works, I can't even see the Mebo from where I'm sitting, but I'm going to try to pick up one of those balls there just using the camera on the Mebo, which is always a bit of a challenge to kind of figure it out exactly. But I think my wrist has to go down a little bit. Obviously, I have to open up the claw. 
All right. And now I'm going to try to move it forward. I'm going to do this, this kind of gradual adjust. I'm going to go for maybe that orange one there. Just give you an idea of the gameplay here. I am not the most skilled pilot. My kids should be doing it. They're better. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to drive forward. I think I am inside. That should work. Oh, I'm squeezing it. It's a squishy ball enough that will pick up. Let's give it a try. I've done it. I'm very proud of myself when we hooked on there. So there you go. I mean, that's kind of the idea that you up oh, dropped it. But the idea is you would do stuff like that, could release it. Now I've been recording all that. So let me just stop the recording. So you might want to share this out then with your friends. You're impressed. You pick something up. A remote control moves something around. So what you do is you click over here to play, and then you'll see all the different things you recorded. I'm going to click on the one we just did, right? And then I can just go and I can play it directly here. Okay, so it's playing the video there, so it's showing what we did. So that's the fun part. You can go into a room, record your little mission, stuff like that. Um, what I'm going to do is let me just pause this so we don't hear the echo in the background. But the cool thing, you can export it. If you click here, you have the ability to export that to your device. And so now you can go ahead and share this on Facebook, wherever you want to do Instagram, all that stuff. Because now it's on your device. So in the first session, Chris Cassidy used the robot to survey the terrain behind me. It was a simulated a lunar environment. During the second session, Luca Parmitano deployed a telescope using a film-based telescope that was deployed off the back of the robot. Okay. Uh, and today, during the third session, Karen Nyberg is going to go out and inspect that deployed telescope. What do you see the next steps for the surface retail robotics testing? Yeah, our testing this summer here has really been about collecting basic information to understand how to build this kind of system for the future. Um, once we finish the testing today, we're going to spend some time looking at all the data collected from the past three sessions to try to figure out how do we actually design and build future uh, remotely operated robots. Outside of the package, we have the Recon Bot. Taking a look at these shock resistant wheels first because that kind of feels like the highlight of this vehicle. They are pretty durable. We've got these uh, great treads coming out for awesome traction. These kind of rounded honeycomb sides for probably bumping off stuff. Uh, looks to be pretty durable. Uh, we have the wireless antenna up top and the camera in the center here. Looks like we have controls to move the camera so it's not maybe pointed straight but up a little bit for better views and a lock button there. On off button on top and a little red light for a power indicator. This thing runs off four AA batteries. There's also a back uh, attachment here to add a third wheel for stability. So we're going to turn on your RC vehicle here and it's going to blink red and I imagine we're going to turn this on here and we're going to see a view that has never been seen before. Look at that. There is me, my big yap, my camera looking right back at the world. Pretty crazy. So hi there camera. So it's fair to say that at some point in the future, maybe, maybe in your lifetime, uh, that instead of controlling, let's say, curiosity from the planet and sending commands, we could actually have astronauts in orbit around Mars uh, operating a robot. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, it's our goal to enable astronauts to make use of these robots uh, from any place in the solar system, whether they're controlled from Earth or from orbit, maybe even from the surface and a habitat and just have robots working uh, out in the field. Uh, it's really all the same thing, remotely operated robots improve the way that we do exploration. All this technology that you're using here today, how does that benefit us in, in, in the public sector? Well, the thing that really excites me about this technology is that it's really approving the way that we can use robots to do work remotely. We know already, in fact, that on Earth, you can use robots to explore the depths of the ocean from the surface. Uh, in space, we're trying to use uh, robots like K-10 to allow astronauts to remotely explore other planets. But here on Earth, you can use the same sort of approach so that you, know, you or I could actually work at an office, say in Houston, while living in I don't know, Hawaii. Uh, the whole idea of being able to live in one place and work remotely um, is what we're trying to really enable using robotics technology. Or this thing will be really flipping out. The vehicle grips the ground really well. Goes really good forward, turns on a dime. White turns are a little tricky though. Full 360 degree rotation. Let's hunt the cat down in the garage now. Because the vehicle jerks around a lot, it's hard to get that camera on something you're looking for. 
Keep trying and you'll find that kitty cat. Is K-10 an actual concept that will be used on Mars down the road? K-10 for us, is, it's a research robot here. It's got a lot of interesting technology that we hope to one day see in flight. Uh, the software that's on board, the software that's off board, descendants of those pieces of, of software may one day end up in an actual flight rover. Now, is this really the prequel to R2-D2? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I think that we're on a, a path to eventually have robots that are like the robots we see in the movies. Uh, and one of the things that's just so much fun about my job is trying to make science fiction into reality. It's obstacle driving time! If I were to sit down at a console and you put these controls in front of me and said operate the robot, mm -hmm. would I be able to do it by just looking at the screen? Are there any kind of on-screen directions? Pretty, pretty close, yes. You have like a DVR? Yes, actually yes. I do. Yeah, well um, the controls for running plans on the robot, the, mm -hmm. the task sequences, are basically like DVR controls. There's a play button, there's a pause button. Idiot proof? Pretty close. Okay, good. Yeah, deal. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the robot and actually saves itself. So even if you you tell it to run into a rock, it'll refuse to do so. So the robot says, "Uh, uh, there's an obstacle there. I can't go that way." So that is some light testing of the video recon bot. A pretty interesting little gadget to play with. It drives around pretty well, does some nice tight turns. A little tricky when going from forward to back as it likes to flip itself upside down having the antenna on the bottom. So that's kind of cumbersome. But once you get the hang of it, it's kind of fun. The there's a lot of swag coming from you right now. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 yeah. You gotta, but you gotta realize there's, there's a big difference between controlling, let's say, a K-10 rover from ISS or a planetary system, as opposed to playing the Atari 2600 eight wow. hours a day. Wow. You know, so, what? You, know, I just, <laughs> you know what? I did see an old unit the last time I was over at your house. I know. But, but seriously, no, I think, it, I think it's a, a good point. I mean, part of the reason it has to be simple, it's just like we talked about earlier, they don't have a lot of training or access. You don't spend hours uh, preparing to drive this rover. They want something they can just pick and uh, like plug and play. Well, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you something we're gonna try in real time, our piloting skills, but let me just show you some of the other features here first. Over here, I have this one turned off down at the bottom, but you can, um, Amiibo uh, can be listening to anything in the room. I'll turn it on for a second. And what that means is he's broadcasting now back to the iPad. And you hear that bit of a delay, that's why we had it off. But this would allow you to go into another room and basically use Meeple like a little spy, be able to hear things. All right, so we have pretty basic functionality there. The other thing, of course, and turn that off for a second, you can talk through Meeple. So I can click on this here, right? And in addition to use my own voice and talking, which let me show you that first, if I go over to microphone here. Um, so I can go ahead and I can record something, I can play it, so let me just show you here. I'm gonna uh, record right in real time something right here. Hello, my name is Meebo. Okay, so I've recorded that. Now let's say I've got that and I want to play it when I go into a room. That was hard to hear. So Meebo's a little bit of a distance away. Um, but what I'll do is I'll send it to Meebo. Hello, my name is Meebo. At each waypoint, you might have a command to take an inspection image or a panorama image. And if all things go as planned, it'll go to those stations and take those images. But sometimes, like, it'll take an image and you'll be like, this isn't the image that I wanted. It's not pointing the direction. Right. Then it's Karen, the astronaut's responsibility to, you know, maybe rotate the robot a little bit to take the image that the ground requested. Okay. No, it's no, it's an interesting point. I, I think part of that is just the emergence of the technology and, and the life uh, span that it has. Because it seems like even though this, 
this demonstration is going to help NASA in the short run, you see tons of long-range ap uh, applications for it. Right. I mean, I'm just wondering one day, am I going to be sitting there gaming, playing uh, my particular console, and decide, well, I want to go take a, a flight uh, around Mars, and I'll control a drone or something, or control some kind of rover, and do my own work as just an average person. Or better yet, you're, you're a student in a fifth grade class, and today's topic is robotics, and every kid is operating their own rover on another planet. From their iPad. From their iPad iPad, are you kidding me? Those will be passe. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look. At all things NASA, if they pass my investigation, by the way. I just I didn't want you to lose the impact of the significant moment for me, so bear that in mind. Quit your jibble jabble. <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> First name, Mr. Middle name, Junior. Uh, what was that? It's my Mr. Tina Pocket. <laughs> <laughs>